Hi everybody, this is Paul Cooper with Totes and Notes, and on this video we're going to talk about what happens if the investment goes bad and how we protect your investment from these type of situations. So there are a number of ways that things can go bad. You know, we may get there and get the property and it's got a bunch of damage to it. Maybe it's trashed out, maybe values in the area were way off and it's not worth nearly as much as we thought. Um, you know, the place could burn down. The, it could be a really prolonged foreclosure. It could be really hard to find the people. And then when we do find them, they give us the whole over uh, you know, my dead body type of thing or tell us to pound sand. And then we've really got to, um, you know, they, they hire a lawyer and really prolong the, the foreclosure. So those are the kind of the main things that could happen to protect or to, um, to hurt the investment and then things go bad. So what we do is if the situation doesn't look very good, and I've had to do this in the past. Um, in fact, I've had to do this earlier this year, a few months ago. What will happen is, is uh, it didn't look like the investment was going to make nearly as much money as we originally thought. There ended up being some more expenses. So instead of uh, make, you know, we were expecting to, we were hoping to make 20% for our investor. And it looked at like it was only going to be 10% before we gave the investor their their cut and our cut so it really wasn't going to be a very good investment after we um we split the profits and so what we did is we quickly flipped the note to another note buyer basically made a thousand bucks off of it i gave 750 to the investor kept 250 for our expenses and it wasn't a huge money maker but considering that their money was only tied up for about 30 days and it was on a um I think it was about fifteen thousand dollars is what they invested, and they made seven hundred fifty bucks. They ended up getting a pretty decent ROI, especially considering how um, how quickly we got them out of the position. Now I can't guarantee that'll happen. We may end up having to sell it for a loss, but that's what we try to do. Is if we get in there and then something comes up, we learn some new information. Something wasn't right. Um, that's a big one. Is try to flip it to another investor real quick. Just go ahead and cut our losses and get into something else. Now, the other thing that we do when we, the second that I get confirmation that we own the property, or not the property, the loan, once that um, this loan sale agreement's signed by both parties and they've received it and given me confirmation, I immediately go online and get force placed insurance on that property. And I do this every single time unless they can prove that there's already insurance on the property. Because it's real cheap and what this does is we are now insured and I can choose the amount um, that we would like to have the insurance on there. And so what I choose is I try to choose the fair market value of the property or the unpaid balance. I definitely get something higher than just our investment amount because if worse comes to worse, the place burns down, there's a tornado, there's a you know flood, something bad happens to it. I wanna get our investment out of it, but I also want you to get paid and get some money out of it. I don't want to just break even after six months, but when we find there's a fire, I want us to actually get compensated for our time. And so that's a big one. Getting that immediately, it's real cheap. And then the other thing is, is let's say we get that, or the borrower already has insurance on it, we just get reimbursed from it from our um, from the insurance company. It's not a big deal. So you don't have to worry about blowing money on something that the borrower may already be paying for. And then the other thing is, is if they don't have insurance, we can now bill them for the forced place insurance. So that's a really good strategy and tip that you always wanna have done when you're buying a note or investing in a note. So some other things that help mitigate some problems if it looks like it's gonna go bad is one, we buy at a huge discount. We're, we're trying to buy at 50% or under of the UPB or fair market value, whichever is um, lower. This way, if uh, if it does look like, you know, oh, the home's not worth as much, well, we've already got that built in. Oh, they moved out and they kind of trashed the place, so we're gonna have to spend a couple thousand bucks getting it fixed up. We've got that built in. We have such a huge discount that allows us to have so many different exit strategies that it's, it's not impossible, but it's pretty hard to just get completely caught with your pants down because there are so many different things that you can do to exit from the position and at least get your money back, if not make money. And then the last thing that we've already talked about previously in the JV agreement is you always get your investment money first before we come up with any profits and split anything. You get your investment money back first. So that may end up being that we just do a quick flip, get your money out, and we can get you invested in something else. And that's, that's, that's key for you. You don't have to worry about, oh, well, there's gonna be a loss here. No, you, you invested 25,000 
we're getting you your twenty-five thousand out. It's not oh we're selling it for twenty-five thousand and then I'm getting my cut and then you get some money back and then you end up losing money. No, you're getting yours first always. You're always going to get your investment back first from the money that's there. And then if there are any profits, you will go from there as far as how we split them. So that's it for this video on what happens if the investment goes bad and how we look out and protect your money. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to me. Thank you.